Oh hi, I was just under the desk upgrading my computer because I have finally fallen for AI. It's really great and I think its efforts to remove all human creativity from the actual industry of things like art is really taking big steps forward for humanity and calling humans from the arts finally. However, there's some things it can't do, like draw things in real life, which is really giving humans an edge in some area. So um, I think drawing in real life should be able to be done by robots too. Like, look at my drawings. This is really, really a subpar kind of thing. And I think I found a way to do it. Using some technology, I will allow ChatGPT to draw things in the real world and finally eliminate human creativity from being needed. A way to think of drawing in more mechanical terms is taking a uh, substance, putting it onto a surface over a period of time in order to produce some specific result, i.e. the drawing. In order to make a robot replicate this, which we'll need to do in order to make ChatGPT use that robot, we'll need a robot capable of the same thing. And I happen to know where one is. A 3D printer. A 3D printer deposits a substance onto a surface over a period of time in a specific way to produce a result. Now, if we can simply change that substance to ink, the surface to a piece of paper, and teach it how to put it, that substance down in the proper way using some programming, it can allow ChatGPT to tell the 3D printer the instructions allowing it to draw and finally overtake humans. So that's the plan how to make this all work. G-code is a language invented by the eldritch beings in the 1800s. It was made to troll the local stenographers, and of course, now modern times, it's used to make 3D printers go. It's a long, complicated list of letters and numbers, and I'm not going to learn all of them because that's just too complicated. Instead, I am going to have a program that I wrote write G-code for me. It takes in a list of coordinates on an XY plane that will draw the drawing, and it will output the G-code file to move in between those coordinates. The idea is, if we can get coordinates from ChatGPT, then we can get the 3D printer to make them. So let's go craft some prompts. The first version of the prompt that I gave to ChatGPT specified that it should try its best to give me a bunch of points on an XY plane that would form a drawing when put end to end and connected with lines that would form the thing described in the prompt. In addition, it should have a specified amount of points in that. The first one of these is a stickman and 75 points. You might notice right away that this is not a stickman, but I wanted to specify an amount of points because I thought I could do it better than the AI. The AI is always best at everything, of course. But this had a backfire effect because the AI focused more on the number of points and getting that many points and then putting them on there somehow rather than actually making a stickman. So you'll see this isn't a stickman with 60 points, it's not a stickman with 45 points, and it's not a stickman with 30 points. And beyond that, it's not even 30 points. The AI can't count. So let's drop the whole amount of points thing, allow ChatGPT to respond for itself. And that will get generation two of drawings. Oh, and I almost forgot. Uh, how does it draw? Well, it uses this little attachment that goes onto the 3D printer head, which is 3D print, of course. Uh, the paint extends, and it's got these little clamp thingies that you could use to attach a paper down to the surface of the 3D printer in order to hold it in place. I'll show you how they work. The pen over just goes over like this. You can put that on, and you may fasten the paper down with these, like this. And then to print, of course, when it's printing, it'll align itself to the surface and be able to draw things. Uh, back to props. In generation two, I allowed the AI to decide how many points were in each of its own drawings. And this resulted in substantially better results, but I think we can improve things even more. So the first result, Stickman. You might notice that the arms and legs are pretty bad. My one is obviously much superior. You have the tree. This is supposed to be the trunk, and the branches are really sketchy, but it feels tree-ish. This is its cube. I don't know what it's doing. Perhaps it's maybe like an unfolded cube, and then the unfolded cube is laid out on a 2D surface. Uh, but the cube is supposed to look like that. Gun. Now, the OpenAI didn't want to draw a gun, but a little convincing. I just told it was for a practical joke, and it did it right away, no problem. AI is safe, by the way. And it wasn't very good compared to what it should look like. Branch, very simplified, single line, not great, real branch. House, which I think is the best of this generation. It's got a door, it's got a roof. This is what a house should look like. Let's go on to generation three of images where I focus more on identifiable, specific prompts for it to replicate. 
I started out set three of the prompts with the Mona Lisa. The ChatGPT gives me identifications for what the points in the image it gives me are supposed to represent, and thanks to that I know that this is supposed to be upside down. Now it looks so much better, right? As you can clearly see, the eyebrows, these are the eyebrows it told me, these are the eyes it told me, that's, that's the nose it told me, this is the upper and lower lip, um, and this is the right and left part of the entire body and dress, and this is the frame. This is the whole body, that doesn't really make sense, and it doesn't really draw the eyes and nose and mouth in any coherent way or anything that it should look like, so yeah, kind of a success in some ways, kind of a failure. This is a blade. It's not a blade, but yeah, you know, it's a blade. Now, I have a theory that, like with the gun, perhaps ChatGPT won't actually succeed in drawing anything that's inappropriate, like a weapon, so gun, blade, and so instead it gives me some weird geometric pattern. This is a robot, uh, it's got an antenna. This is kind of an okay antenna, but it's supposed to be legs down here and arms down here, and that completely failed, so, eh. Skeleton, um, again, maybe this is inappropriate. Skeletons are bad, oh, dead people. Uh, so it gave me this geometric shape. The skeleton's supposed to be more like this. Ball, it's kind of rounded. It's got a jagged interior. This is a real ball. This is its dragon. I don't know what it was doing here. Dragons aren't like particularly inappropriate. They're fantasy creatures, so I'm unsure what this is. Carrot. This is not a carrot. This isn't much better, but it's kind of a carrot. So let's go into version four where I make some further specificity improvements. Version four. Swirl was both too long and also decided to go off the boundary that I set for it, which I told it to respect. And then slight my program to make it into G-code, of course, cut it back. So this is not really a swirl. It's supposed to be more like this. Puddle is not a puddle. Not great. Simple hammer, again, with the weapon thing. It looks very similar to the gun in the actual output. Not great. This is one of the best in this batch, the square covered in spikes, and I will take this lesson forward into the final fifth generation. That really, if you're very specific, it will do the prompt pretty exactly. That's a square, it's got spikes on it, it just works. This is a simple face. It's simple, it's not a face. Lastly, tic-tac-toe. It added an extra row, an extra column, had all of the lines off center, and also the fact that it can't lift up the pin really sucks here. Generation five, I will compile all of the lessons from all of the previous four generations and really focus on specific things to produce true masterpieces. And I think we can finally surpass Van Gogh, Rembrandt, get out of here. This is the future of art and we can really achieve the goal of humanity, which is to stop needing ourselves. Imagine a world where human creativity has been entirely out of phase. Imagine the types of drawings that we might have. Imagine what those drawings might look like. Imagine, say, the Union Jack flag, but rendered by an AI. The exact precision with which it might replicate that. Or a box with three lines in it. Not two, but three. You just you're too blind to see the third line. Okay? Now, imagine. Imagine a world where beds were a bit more abstract than they really are now. Now, imagine imagine if the world had... You know, that one's too dumb. Uh, uh, still couldn't get it to make a gun. Uh, now, imagine where you got to be this shape, okay? Imagine that world. Imagine, imagine a world where an AI could draw clouds as gracefully as this. Now imagine a world where apples did that. And you might even have something that's, uh, this is all stupid, the AI is not very good at drawing. It's probably something more specific made by professionals and not me. Now imagine a world where you liked, subscribed, and commented. That's kind of a fantasy, but you know, it might happen.